So we will chant verse number four onwards. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Prakritim Vidhime Param Jeeva Bhutam Mahabaho Jeeva Bhutam Mahabaho Okay, so the last class we talked about Krishna explaining the lower nature, what is the lower nature, and now he says that that was my lower nature. So it's a very Significant verse from the angle of Shastram, from the angle of Vedanta. So this is Iyam Aparaha. So that Apare Yamatasvanya. Iyam Aparaha. This eightfold uh, Apara Prakriti, which I talked about. Apara. Why Apara? Because matter. Apara means inferior. And matter is inferior. Ketanam consciousness is superior. And therefore, apara is inferior. Why is it apara? Shankara says, it is ashuddha. It is full of, it is impure. This eightfold prakriti, which he talked about, where in the fourth verse, bhoomi apo nalo vayuhu khammano buddhirevacha ahankaro iti. The eightfold principle, which we discussed in great detail in the last class, he says, Iyam aparaha, that is the inferior part of my nature, that is the lower part of my nature. Why is it lower? Ashuddaha. Ashuddaha means impure. How impure? It is filled with ragadvesha, kamakrodha. Ragadvesha, likes and dislikes. Kamakrodha, desires and anger. Loba moha, greed and delusion. And so on. Madhamatsarya, Agnyanam, Samshaya, Viprayaya, everything is there. Right? So, there are many types of impurities. Some impurities can be in the mind, in the emotional aspect of your mind. The Manomaya Kosha, you have Ragadvesha, you have Kamakrodha, you have Loba Moha. And some impurities can be in Vijnanamaya Kosha, so the Agnyanam, Samshaya, Viparyaya, so ignorance, samshaya, doubt, viparyaya, incorrect knowledge or misconceptions, these are all part of the Vijnanamaya Kosha. So these are all apara, these are all lower. Why lower? Because it's all subject to modification. Whereas the para principle, the consciousness principle, is the unchanging principle, not subject to modification. And therefore, we should be very careful when a lot of people, when they talk about consciousness, they refer to it as energy. They are trying to distinguish 
between the physical body, matter, and that which makes it move, which we know is consciousness, but which a non-Vedantin will refer to as energy. In fact, many teachers, they talk about, they equate consciousness with energy. We must remember that energy is not different from matter because they are interchangeable. Energy is matter in motion. So, E is equal to mc squared, Einstein said. You can convert matter into energy and the other way around. And therefore, consciousness cannot be equated to matter, cannot be equated to energy also. It's a very basic error which people make. They equate consciousness with energy. It is not. Energy is matter only. Consciousness is consciousness only. So, he says, that em aparaha, that was my lower nature and and anyam. So again, it's all part of the first word. Apara, I am tu anyam. So you break that up. Apare mitaspanyam is apara, I am tu anyam. So apara, I am. Yam apara is that which I have already talked about in the fourth sloka. And anyam prakriti, the other prakriti may you know, vidhi me param. May you know that Anyam Prakriti Vidhi may. I have another nature also, which is Param, which is my higher nature. A nature which is neither matter nor energy. And which is Vishuddham. So we talked about Apara Prakriti as Ashuddham. Here he says, Shankara says, this is Vishuddham. This higher nature, this Param Prakriti is Vishuddham. Vishuddham is what? Visheshena Shuddham. V stands for Visheshena, specifically, totally. So Vishuddham means totally pure. Well, the other one was Ashuddham. And this totally pure consciousness is beyond observation, beyond the laws of the universe. And where is that para prakriti located? That para prakriti is also available very much within this creation only. So just as apara prakriti, the lower nature is here, para prakriti, the higher nature is also available in this creation. Now the question is, if both are available, how should I go around recognizing it? And what should you do? You should have two baskets, you know, two laundry baskets. Whatever is changing, whenever you come across something which is changing, you put it in the Apara Prakriti basket, the lower nature basket. So whatever is changing is whatever you experience. Everything that you experience, everything that you see, everything that we hear, everything that you touch, everything that you smell, everything you should put under or into the Apara Prakriti basket. What is Para Prakriti? What is left is Para Prakriti. And that para prakriti is goes into the para prakriti basket. That para prakriti is what? You, the experiencer, the one who is putting the experiences into the para prakriti basket. That person, that entity, that experiencer, that consciousness principle, that is you, the jiva, the observer. The observed body is a para prakriti. The observed mind is Apara prakriti. The observed universe is apara prakriti. Put them all into the that basket. But you, the observer, jiva, the experiencer, you are para prakriti, and you should put yourself into the para prakriti basket. That is why tattvamasi. And this verse is very important because it contains the essence of that mahavakyam tattvamasi. So he says, jiva bhuta mahabaho vidhi. Mahabahu, hey Arjuna, hey Arjuna of strong arms, Jiva Bhutam Vidhi, may you know that that Jiva is of the Bhutam, is consciousness principle itself. May you know that the very nature of the Jiva, Jiva Bhuta, the very nature of the Jiva is the consciousness principle itself. The experiencer behind the body mind complex, that is the Jiva. Your inert body-mind complex is activated by consciousness. And that consciousness, I am. 
So Shankaracharya takes the word jiva because it's very important over here and says jiva has two meanings. One is vachyartha and one is lakshyartha. Okay. So what is the vachyartha of jiva? Vachyartha of jiva is the chidhabhasa, the RC, also called ahankara. Okay. Vachyartha of jiva, the literal meaning of jiva. Again, the ahankara meaning, jiva is ahankara, I am saying, the RC. So the ahankara here is in the sense of Vedanta. Remember, there is another ahankara used by Dharma Shastram. That ahankara is different. That refers to the sense of entitlement or the sense of you know, worthiness which is not really not there. Thinking that I am greater than I actually am. That is ego, ahankara. That is, that is the same word ahankara but used in the Dharma Shastra sense. Here it is not there. It is used in the Jnana Shastra, the Vedanta sense. So, jiva ahankara here means chidhavas, the RC. So, Shankara says, jiva has two meanings. One is vachyartham, which is the RC, the ahankara. And one is lakshar, lakshyartham. Lakshyartham means the very consciousness principle itself. Avastha traya sakshi jiva. That principle is that consciousness principle, which is the witness consciousness of the three avasthas. That two meanings are there. Vachyartha ahankara, lakshyartha avastha traya sakshi, the sakshi chaitanyam. And that is the meaning to be taken here. When, he, when Krishna says that, that jiva is my higher, higher nature. That is what he is saying. Right? Jiva bhutam me param vidhi. Know that the nature of the jiva is my real nature, my higher nature. Jiva bhutam param me vidhi is my higher nature. That higher nature cannot be the RC, cannot be the hankara. Because of the context, Shankara takes, says, take the lakshyartam of jiva. Lakshyartam is avastha traya sakshi, pakshi chaitanyam itself. And what is the, what is special about the chaitanyam? Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Because of that chaitanyam alone, idam jagat dharyate. Idam is yaya, yeah, yeah, idam jagat dharyate. Because of that consciousness principle alone, which is my higher nature, this entire material universe, inert, jadam material universe is sustained. So at the physical body, we experience this consciousness how? In the form of the very life principle. The body seems to have life because the sukshma shariram is reflecting the consciousness. That is at the vyashti level, at the level of the individual. At the cosmic level, at the samashti level, what is the role that this Chaitanya is, is playing? The whole universe is in harmony only because of this intelligence principle, which is consciousness principle. The world, the universe, it functions like a, like a gigantic or rather a samashti human being. right? And that is why we say samashti shariram, which is Lord Brahmaji. The whole universe is called Brahmaji because the universe functions because of this cosmic intelligence principle, the universe functions like a gigantic cosmic human being. That principle, because of that para prakriti alone, and that is the beauty, that para prakriti because of which the entire universe functioning, that para, para prakriti is jiva bhuta, is really the nature of the jiva, and it is my higher nature. And that is why when we, the 11th chapter we say, Vishwaropaha, you are looking upon the universe itself as a cosmic, the samashti purushaha, as a cosmic person. So whatever is visible in the universe, that is apara prakriti, that is apara prakriti, that invisible sustaining adhishthanam, substratum, that is called para prakriti. So this simply he says, I have two natures, one is lower, and that lower nature has eight parts which I talked about in the last verse. And there is a second part of me, which is a higher nature. And that higher nature is nothing else than the essential nature of the jiva, which is the lakshyartham of the word jiva, which is the consciousness principle. 
not the body mind sense complex. Okay, now we look at the sixth mantra, the sixth sloka. We will chant. Etad yoni nibhutani. Sarvani Chupadharaya Sarvani Chupadharaya Aham Krishnasya Jagataha Aham Krishnasya Jagataha Prabhavaf Pralayastatha Okay. So he says that so in the in the last verse, in the fourth verse, not in the last verse, in the last class, we talked about the emergence of the intermediary stage, right? The sukshma stage. And here Krishna is saying, what happens after that? There is a conversion of that stage into the final universe. So the previous two verses, fourth and fifth, they consist of presenting the stage before creation. And though that, that involves two uh, entities, Paraprakriti and the eightfold Aparaprakriti. But from that, that's not the real, real cosmos, that is not the real universe, that is the pre-universe stage, pre-srishti stage. And from that pre-srishti stage, Krishna says, the entire universe consisting of Panchabhutanis and Bhautikanis, they emerge. What are Panchabhutanis? Five elements. What are Bhautikanis? We saw it at The combination post-Panchikaranam, they are called the Bhautikanis. When Panchabhutanis combine in various ratios, what emerges is the gross version. Maha Panchabhutani is a Tanmatras. The Sukshma Panchabhutani is a Tanmatras, not visible. When they combine through Panchikarnam, what comes out is the Bhautikanis, the Stula universe, the solid universe, the gross universe is born. And this is what he now talks about. So he says, Sarvani Bhutani, all the living beings that you experience. Flower, tree, animal, human body, the minutest, minutest organism which you can think of. That universe, remember this Sarvani Bhutani has another name in Puranas and Itihasa. It's called Brahmanda. Brahmanda literally means the universe, the physical gross universe. Sarvani Bhutani etat yoni ni. This has me. Etat yoni means this is the womb. And that etat is what? For that etat, you have to go back to verse number 4 and 5. Verse number 4 says aparaprakriti. Verse number 5 says paraprakriti. Etat here means the combination, the mixture of paraprakriti and aparaprakriti is the yoni, the womb. So sarvani bhutani yoni is what? The womb of all beings is nothing but a mixture of para and apara prakriti. That para apara prakriti alone is called Ishwaraha. So we refer to it as Brahman plus Maya. Krishna refers to it as para plus para. You have seen that para means consciousness principle, apara means the eightfold depth, eightfold parts. And therefore Ishwara alone, because Ishwara is Brahman plus Maya, Ishwara is para plus apara. Remember that when, when the universe is formed, the substance of the universe, it's formed from the apara part. The apara part of Ishwara, the apara aspect of Ishwara is the upadana karanam, the material cause of this universe. Right? So that material cause is maya, and para is consciousness, which is the nimitta karanam, the instrumental or the intelligent cause. And without both, nothing can happen. Consciousness by itself, the para prakriti by itself cannot do anything because it has nothing to do anything with. Apara by itself is inert. 
The eightfold parts are inert. It cannot become the cause of the universe unless there is a catalyst, which is parapragrati. Right? So, remember that you, here there is a doubt. If you are saying that Paraprakriti cannot create, Brahman cannot create without the help of Maya, are you not saying that Brahman is dependent upon Maya, which is exactly opposite to what, what uh, Shastram says. Brahman is independent, independent, independent. But here Krishna is saying that with the help of both, it's a mixture. Mixture alone is the boom. Eta dhyoni bhutani. Mixture alone is the boom. Sarvani iti upadharayaha. In this matter, in this, in this manner alone must you understand. Iti upadharaya. Understand, the correct understanding is that both are required for creation. So are you not saying that paraprakriti is dependent upon aparaprakriti for creating? That's a question. And the answer is yes. Paraprakriti, Brahman, is dependent upon aparaprakriti. But for what? From the standpoint of its creator status. From the standpoint, standpoint of its karanam status. Brahman to be a creator has a dependence upon Maya. So Paraprakriti has a dependence upon Aparaprakriti to become a creator. From the standpoint of being called Karanam, Paraprakriti is necessarily dependent upon Aparaprakriti. But Paraprakriti has no dependence upon Aparaprakriti for the existence of Paraprakriti. Very, very fine difference. Paraprakriti depends upon a Paraprakriti for its label as a creator, as a Karanam. Paraprakriti has no dependence upon a Paraprakriti from the viewpoint of its existence. Paraprakriti exists without any dependence upon Aparaprakriti, while in the case of Aparaprakriti, Aparaprakriti depends on Paraprakriti for the creation, yes. For becoming Upadana Karanam, Paraprakriti, Aparaprakriti is dependent upon Paraprakriti. Not only that, for its very existence also, Aparaprakriti depends upon Paraprakriti. So from the angle, from one angle of existence, Brahman is independent of Maya. But Maya, even from existence point, is dependent upon Brahman. While from the status of, for the status of creator, Brahman depends upon Maya and Maya depends upon Brahman. Therefore, the independent one is Satyam and the dependent one is Mithya. Whenever you use the word Satyam and Mithya, remember you are using it from the viewpoint of dependence only. Brahman is Satyam from, depend, from the point of existence. Maya is Mithya from the point of existence. But both depend upon each other from the, for the label of creator. From creation angle, for the Karanam angle, both of them are mutually dependent. The Karanatvam, the creator status, is possible only when both are there. Only when there is availability of Brahman and availability of Maya. Availability of Paraprakriti and availability of Aparaprakriti are both necessary for creation to take place. So that is one aspect. Then, Krishna here says, that Ishwara is Upadana Karanam. Right. Remember that Ishwara is also Nimitta Karanam as also Upadana Karanam. But here Krishna is talking about or focusing on the Upadana Karanam part of it, the material cause. I hope 
Nimitta and Upadana, I don't need to explain, but I will just remind myself. Nimitta Karanam is instrumental cause, the intelligent cause. Upadana Karanam is material cause. Right? And thus, Para Prakriti enjoys Upadana Karanam status. Remember that even though we say Nimitta and Upadana, Para and Apara are both Upadana Karanam also. You can say that Para Prakriti is Nimitta Karanam and Maya is Upadana Karanam. Right? Brahman is Nimitta Karanam and Maya is Upadana Karanam, you can say. But the correct understanding is Brahman is both Nimitta and Upadana Karanam. Therefore, from the point of view of creation, Brahman is dependent upon Maya. Maya is dependent upon Brahman. Both of them are Upadana Karanams because of the other one. The status of material cause is given to Maya because of Brahman. The status of material cause is given to Brahman because of Maya. Right? Like you say father and mother. The male, the father, enjoys the label of father. Why? Because the mother has given birth to a child. The lady, mother, has the label of mother. Why? Because the father was there in the production of the child. Both are dependent upon each other. Therefore, because of para prakriti, apara prakriti becomes upadana karanam. Because of apara prakriti, para prakriti becomes upadana karanam. That is what Krishna is saying here. Brahman and Maya can be both considered upadana karanam. Okay. Now, Maya is what type of upadana karanam? Because Maya actually evolves, changes into the world. And therefore, Maya is upadana karanam. Maya meaning? Apara Prakriti in the language of this particular chapter. So Apara Prakriti Maya becomes Upadana Karanam but becomes Parinami Upadana Karanam. Parinami means that which changes. So Apara Prakriti which is Maya becomes the Parinami Upadana Karanam, the changing material cause. While therefore it is because of Brahman that Maya acquires this label, Parinami Upadana Karanam. But in its turn, Maya, Apara Prakriti, assists Brahman, Para Prakriti, also in getting Karanam status. Also Upadana Karanam status. Brahman is also Upadana Karanam, but Brahman is Vivarta Upadana Karanam. Right? And therefore, whenever we talk, we can talk about Brahman as Nimitta Karanam and Maya as Upadana Karanam. But if you are focusing only on the Upadana Karanam part, then Brahman is Vivarta Upadana Karanam. Vivarta meaning non-changing, not subject to change. So Brahman is material cause, not subject to change. Maya is material cause, subject to change. Parinami Upadana Karanam. So one is Savikara Upadana Karanam. Karana, upadana Karanam which undergoes Vikara, undergoes change. And the other one is Brahman, Apara, Brahman Para Prakriti is Nirvikara Upadana Karanam which undergoes no change. Okay, now the question is when you say Upadana Karanam there must be the lending of something, right? So when, for example, gold becomes the upadana karanam for the necklace, what does gold lend to the necklace? The material. The material. Right. Okay. All right. Now, that is where this example stops. When you say Brahman becomes Okay, other way around. When you say Maya, 
Apara Prakriti becomes Upadana Karanam. What does Maya lend the world? Matter. Sorry, matter or name and form? Okay. Nama Rupa. Nama Rupa. But we are also saying Brahman or Para Prakriti is Upadana Karanam. So, what does Para Prakriti lend the world? What does Brahman contribute towards the world? Maya contributes the matter, the name, and the form. What does Sachit Brahman contribute? Sachit Anand. Brahman contributes Sachit Ananda. And this contribution of Sachit Ananda can be done by Brahman without any change in itself. And therefore, it is Vivarta Upadhanaka. And therefore, Paraprakriti gives. Chidavasa, Sadabhasa, Ananda Abhasa. The Abhasa is very important. As if it's a reflection. Paraprakriti Brahman gives reflection of consciousness. Sadabhasa, reflection of existence. Ananda Abhasa, reflection of Ananda by lending, by bringing Aparaprakriti into contact with itself, which is Sat Chit Ananda. One more thing. How does it lend by mere presence alone without undergoing any change? Remember, there is no action involved in this because paraprakriti is akarta. Therefore, the, the verb lend has to be understood carefully. The verb lend here is the moment you use a verb, it normally means an action and therefore you have to understand very carefully. It is the very nature of Paraprakriti, of Brahman, that when an appropriate medium comes in contact, that medium can reflect Sat Chit Ananda. Mm. It is like the mirror being brought into the vicinity of the sun. Right? We say the mirror lends the reflection, but the sun lends the reflection, but sun doesn't do anything. The reflection is picked up because the sun is there and it is the nature of the mirror to reflect the sun. It is the nature of the sun to be reflected in an appropriate reflecting medium. There is no action by the sun. Similarly, when you say Paraprakriti donates or lends Tash Chitan Ananda Tannidhi Matrena by, by mere presence alone. No change is there in Brahman. It is the very nature of Brahman that when an appropriate medium comes, Sat is reflected, Chit is reflected, Ananda is reflected. Okay. One more point. What is the meaning of Upadana Karanam? The meaning of Upadana Karanam is the cause for creation, Srishti Karanam, cause for maintenance, Sthiti Karanam, cause for Resolution, resolution, laya karanam. And therefore, the universe is emerging out of Ishvara. Ishvara is what? Brahman plus Maya, apara plus paraprakriti. Brahman plus Maya, which is Ishvara. Therefore, this whole universe emerges out of Ishvara. When you say it is supported by Ishvara, it means the universe exists in Ishvara. And when pralayam comes, the universe resolves into Ishvara. And therefore Krishna says, Iti Upadharaya. Understand in this manner. Assimilate the teaching in this manner. Not only does the whole universe come from me, it rests in me and will be going back into me. So that is one round. Second round, again Srishti will start. And again the whole circle the whole cycle will repeat. How do you know? We said in an earlier chapter, avyakta dini bhutani vyakta madhyani bharata avyakta nidhanani eva tatraka paridevana The entire process, creation, sustenance, dissolution is a never-ending cycle. And so Krishna says, aham kritsnasya jagataha of this entire universe, I alone, prabhavaha, I am the creator. 
and I am the destroyer. The question is how to recognize. Now for recognition, there are two types of indicators. Okay, so indicators are what in Sanskrit we call it lakshanam. Or Hindi you call it lakshan, the indicator, right? You say, iske lakshan thik nahi hai. The indication is that guy is not okay, right? So, lakshanam. And we know what are the two lakshanams, rupa lakshanam and tadhasta lakshanam. Rupa lakshanam does what? It reveals the essential nature of something. So if you look at a gold necklace and then say it is gold, you are using the word that is gold. You are indicating the essential nature of the necklace, which is nothing but gold. And that is Swarupa Lakshanam. Right. Tadastha Lakshanam is something else. Supposing, for example, you are trying to you know, point out my house, which is located in, in a row of houses. And you are trying to point, point out my house to a friend. So you see from far, and you say, they, that house in front of which, you know, that steel brew item is standing. That is his house. Okay. What does it mean? He can use that item to recognize my house at that point of time. Once having recognized the house, the next time he comes, he does not need the car to be there anymore. So, Tathastha Lakshanam is something which is there at one point of time, but need not be there again. So that is the a temporary feature is Tathastha Lakshana. Right? While the permanent feature is Swarupa Lakshana. And Tathastha is what? Tathastha be, tatha, tatha astaha. It is the bank of a river. So when you say this is a river, that particular section of the bank of the river need not be there as the river flows. The same water, when it flows further down, half a mile away, it has got another bank of the river. It's not got the same one. So, Tathastha is temporary. Tathaha, tha. That is the Tatha, the river bank, exists only there, not along with the water everywhere. The water flows, the river bank remains the same. The river bank is temporary. Therefore, Tathastha. Tathastha is temporary. And here, Brahman is being presented as what? As Srishti, Sthiti, Laya Karanam. Now this Srishti, Sthiti and Laya, creation, subsistence and maintenance function of Brahman. Is it essential function or is it incidental function? Incidental. Incidental. Why do you say incidental? Because it goes and comes. It's changing. Changing. Can you reword that? Agama Paina. No. We have to reword it to say that the Srishti Sthiti Laya Kartatvam, the, the <laughs> conditions for being creator, maintenance, and destroyer are not essential conditions for the existence of Brahman. There are times when Srishti Sthiti Laya does not exist, when Brahman continues to exist. Therefore, the Jagat, the universe, is not an essential condition for Brahman to exist. Yes, the universe is an essential condition for Brahman to be recognized, but not for Brahman to exist. Right? So, that is what is being said here. That as this mixture, I, Ishwara, am the cause of creation, destruction of the entire universe. And the word Prabhavaha is to be understood as Utpattihi, creation. So, Srishti, ka, srishti is being Prabhava means Srishti, Pralaya means destruction. So, Srishti Karanam, Laya Karanam, the creative cause and the destructive cause are mentioned here. And to complete it, we have to add Sthiti Karanam also. We say this Ishwara I am. I am the creator, the maintainer and the destroyer. Okay. We will take a small break. Any questions?
right? So, yeah. When you said one is the Parinami and the other is uh, Nivartaka, can we Nivar understand that? A uh, Parinami? No. Parinami means changing. Vivarta means unchanging. Parinam is a result, which means there is a change. Vivarta means unchanging. So don't uh, use the word aparinami. And so when both of them are the upadan and the creation is the nimit, so can it also be reversed that the creation is upadan and then they become the nimit? I didn't say that. That's a wrong understanding. I never said creation is nimittam. Para and Apara are the Upadan and then the creation is not the Nimitta that time. Creation is a product. Karya. And that yes. is a Karya. It's Karya. So the word, what you call Nimitta and Upadana are used in context of Karanam. So you can have a Nimitta Karanam, you can have a Upadana Karanam. That is the intelligent cause and the material cause. And here we are saying is Brahman can be looked at as two things. Brahman can be looked at as, that is Paraprakriti can be looked at as Nimitta Karanam. Paraprakriti can also be looked at as Vivartha Upadana Karanam. While Maya or Aparaprakriti is Parinami Upadana Karanam. So Nimitta Upadana has a Karya Karan Sambhanda, if you can... Nimitta is, for, if you want to take an example, in the production of the gold bangle, the gold is Upadana Karanam, the Nimitta is the goldsmith, the maker, the intelligent cause. And the goldsmith uses the gold to produce the product. So the Karyo is the gold bangle. The Nimit is the, is the gold bangle. The, the Upadana Karanam is, the, Upadana Karanam is gold. Nimitta Karanam is goldsmith. But in this case, you are saying that for, okay, let me give another example for that because that example has a limitation. Take the spider and the web, which is the most famous example. The web is the Karyam. Agreed? Yes, sir. What is the upadana karanam for the web? The liquid for the spider. Is the liquid different from the spider? No, it's a spider. It's a spider. So the spider is the upadana karanam. But the spider is also nimitta karanam because spider uses the, its own body to produce the web. And the spider has two status. Spider can be taken as upadana karanam and nimitta karanam also. Here, of course, spider actually does some work, right? So, example is the limitation there also. But the Brahman simply is there. It lends consciousness and therefore Maya becomes the world. That limitation is there. That is why Brahman can be called Nimittam also. Because without Brahman, Maya cannot function. And Brahman can be called Upadana Karanam also because it is the catalyst because of which Maya functions. Uh, so, but when we take the example of the child and the parents, then the child has come into the world because of his upadana and karyam, and then the parents are the nimit in that in that example. No, parents themselves are the upadana karyam. There has to be a material cause, right? But the karyam is the child being produced. The source. Karyam is the child being produced. What is the source of the child? We don't take his uh, karma, his uh, previous, I mean, he has no, to be here. You don't take, look, we are not talking about karma at all, right? You're talking about the body of the child. When you say child is born, it is only the body which is born. The jiva child is never born. He's anadi. So whenever you talk of birth, you're talking only about the body. The body of the child is born because of the mother's ova and the father's sperm. Those are these, that is a seed. That is upadana karanam which is nothing but in terms of Shastram, that is also Annam. That is why it's called Annamaya Koshaha. Annam produces the father's seeds. Annam produces the mother's egg. Both get together. The body is born. There is a Upadana Karanam there. Okay. Okay.
So we will look at one more verse. Verse number seven. Matta parataram nanyate. Matta parataram nanyate. Kinchidasti dhananjaya. My Sarvamidam Protam. My Sarvamidam Protam. Sutre Manigana Eva. Okay. So he says, My. Parataram na anyat kinchit asti e dananjaya. O Arjuna, there is no karanam which is superior to me. I am the ultimate karanam. Mai sarvamidam protam sutre manigana eva. Sutre manigana eva. Like the beads in a necklace. Mai sarvamidam protam. All the beads in a necklace are strung onto the string. And he says, I am the string onto which Sarvam Idam, the entire universe, is hanging. I am the string by which the whole universe hangs, just like all the beads in the necklace are hung by the string, which is the mala. So, two different lines, two very, very important messages. Matta parataram na anyat asti. Nothing is superior to me, O Dhananjaya. So the message here is, when you say Bhagavan is Karanam, when you say Ishwara is Karanam, you should ask, what type of Karanam? So we have seen, you know, <coughs> uh, three types, Nimitta Karanam, then Vivarta Upadana Karanam, and Parinami Upadana Karanam. But Shastra also talks about two or more types, different classifications. The Karanam can be Apekshika Karanam or Atyantika Karanam. Apekshika Karanam or Atyantika Karanam. Apekshika means relative or intermediary. So any Karanam can be an intermediate cause. And Atyantika Karanam also it can be. Any Karanam can be the ultimate cause, the final cause. What is the difference between the intermediate cause and the final cause? Now, for example, to take what we just discussing, your parents are the Upadana Karanam for your body. When you say that, be very clear. <laughs> when you say my parents are upadana karanam for me, you are running the confusion of saying that my parents are the cause for I, the jiva, which is wrong. Your parents are only the upadana karanam for your body. Right? Because out of their body alone, your physical body <laughs> has come. Okay. So we are, whenever we say my parents are my cause, my upadana karanam, we are talking about my body. Now, your parents, are they atyantika karanam or apekshika karanam for your body? Apekshika. Why? Apekshika. Because, uh, because that jiva is born again and again in, in no, this birth. No, these don't talk about jiva at all. We are, when we say birth, we are talking about body. So this physical body is because of this set of parents. So Correct. they are so they are apekshikal. Atyantika. No. The apekshika answer is right, but the reasoning is wrong. Your parents are the cause for your physical body. The question you should ask is when you say something is apekshika or atyantika. Intermediary, intermediate or final cause, what is the question you should ask yourself? Does that cause have any other cause? So in this case, you have to ask, yes. is there a Karanam for my parents? What will be the answer? 
They are parents. Your grandparents are your are your other cause for your parents, and therefore your parents are apexica only. They are relative because they also have a cause. So whenever you look at any cause, you should ask yourself: Does this cause have a cause? Which means, can I give dual status? to a karanam can i say it's a karanam and a karyam if you can say that some entity is a karanam as well as a karyam a cause as well as a product then you have to label that entity apexika karanam intermediate cause but if you can say something is purely karanam without a karyam then that is But you cannot apply the label of karyam at all. Then it is ultimate cause. Then it is atyantika karana. So this is the definition of intermediary karana. Atyantika karana means the karana which itself is also a product, which itself is also a karyam. Okay. <clears throat> Now let's take another example. The pancha bhutas, the five elements, are karana. Right now, these pancha bhutas are what? Are they intermediate karanam or ultimate karanam? Apexika intermediate. Why? Because they are um, coming from uh, samasti ahamkara, as per sankhya. Don't, don't go into yes. sankhya. Tell me about Vedanta right now. They're coming from sukshma. They are coming from Sukshma. Yeah. So yeah. Thula Pancha Bhutas come from Sukshma. Sukshma. Thula Pancha Bhutas also give you a product which is Bhautikas, the elementals, and therefore Pancha Bhutas are both Karana and Karyam. Therefore, they are Apexika. Okay. What is Atyantika Karana? Ultimate Karana? That which is only a Karana, kevala Karana, and never a Karyam. and therefore the moment you say absolute karanam final karanam you have to say karya vilakshana kevala karanam uh, and absolute karanam has no status can never have a status of karyam can never be product and therefore even krishna is saying matta parataram nanyat there is nothing superior to me i don't have a karanam at all right and therefore he is not a product since he doesn't have a karanam is krishna is saying i am not a karanam so i don't have a product i am not a product right if i am not a product the label karyam can never be applied to me therefore i am atyantika karanam not apexika karanam i am the absolute cause not the relative cause right so one point i want to Say here, which is, you know, people have. I, I've heard this in many classes, sometimes from very advanced students also, sometimes from teachers also. Maya is born from Brahman. They say, is the statement correct? Maya is Brahma Ashrita and not born. Maya is Brahma Ashrita, but. Anadi Maya, Maya yeah. is as beginningless as Brahman is. Of course. Therefore, para and apara prakriti both are anadi, both are ultimate causes. But yes, Maya is Brahma Ashraya, and therefore, what is Brahma Ashraya cannot be different from Brahman. Therefore, Maya and Brahman are not different. there is no line of separation that's a, that's one of the biggest problem about maya and brahman you see maya is a different level, a lower level of reality it is dependent upon brahman therefore you really, really cannot say that brahman and maya are different in vivek sudamani you must have if you have we have done a verse you know where this very beautifully pointed out that maya is neither brahman nor separate from brahman that is why it is called what anirvachaniyam that which cannot be explained that is the reason for calling 
Maya is Anirvachaniyam. You should never think that Maya and Brahman are different. You should never think that Maya and Brahman are same. Maya is Anirvachaniyam. But at different points of you know, discussion, especially as we go up the ladder, we say, really speaking, there is no Maya different from Brahman. Because a lower level of reality cannot be considered to be existing at all. Like the money in your bank account in the dream, right? It's very real when you are in the dream, but it's not available to you today in the daytime. So, therefore, another question comes. If you say that Brahman and Maya are both anadi, are you not talking about Dvaita? Right? The Sankhya, Sankhya philosophy also talks about Purusha and Prakriti as anadi, beginningless. What is the difference? In Sankhya, Anadi Purusha is Satyam. Anadi Prakriti is Satyam. They have got two independent Satyam entities. And therefore, Sankhya is Dvaita Darshan. Dualistic. But in Vedanta, that same Anadi Prakriti, which we call Maya, is Anadi all right. But it is not Satyam. It is Mithya. And therefore, we will accept Prakriti as existing. But we will not count it. You know. So, to explain that, there is, there is a restaurant, I think, somewhere in my hometown, Nagpur. Where there are many mirrors. You know, like, when you go, you are surrounded by mirrors. And therefore, if you go and ask, go for a masala dosha, when you are sitting and you look up, you will see some 10, ten of you around, around you. There are all, all different types of mirrors. So, you will have 10 different images. So, you see 10 ravis sitting over there. How many masala dosas do you order? 10 or 1? So, that's, that's, the, so that's the explanation of, of this anadi prakriti which is mithya. You accept that it is there. But you don't count it. It cannot be counted for your transactions. So, for example, Prashna Upanishad. You know, there's an Upanishad called Prashna Upanishad. It gives the example of a shadow. So, your shadow is experienced but not counted. Right? When you go to a shop to buy a shirt, your shadow is there. But you buy only one shirt. You don't buy another shirt for the shadow. Shadow is seen, experienced, but not counted. That is the explanation of the first one. That is ultimate cause. And whatever is there is also there but cannot be counted. Okay. Now from the second line of that verse, there is a completely different topic which is basically a technique. Adhyaropa pavada prakaranam. Superimposition and negation technique. So, since it will take some time, we don't have enough time today, we will deal that with that in the next class. Any questions? Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnamada 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 Purnamada